Hey everybody, this is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. So, the rumor that's going around is that Harry and Meghan are taking some time apart, giving indication that a separation might be in the works. Quite frankly, we don't know if it's true or not, but at this point, if it was released that they were separated, would anybody be surprised? Highly doubtful. Anyhow, I'm getting bored of the topic. We already see the inevitable coming. I just wish they would rip the Band-Aid off and be done already. Meghan's going to hold on as long as she can because she's nothing without Prince Harry. I just want to take a moment and say thank you to Lady C for validating the work that I've done on the Markle Markle case as well as bringing to attention an important matter that she discussed in her latest video around the civil liberties for Americans. It's something that I had put together in that three-part series, specifically the second and third videos that go into detail around the Aspen Institute and why Harry needs to go. If you haven't seen it, in my opinion, these are the two most important videos that I feel to date that I have created. And I hope that more people will take a moment to go through it because this involves all of us. But back to Lady C, I thank her and am very appreciative of the time that she's taken to look at some of the work. I'm glad that we're moving on the right track. I'm glad to see that it's providing value and hopefully in some cases helps. Anyhow, I was just thinking back when this couple was like the shiny new toy in Hollywood. So when I go back and I rewatched this Lion King premiere, I cringe, not because of Meghan Markle's awkwardness. It's obvious that she just doesn't understand or knows how to carry on a meaningful conversation. But I cringe at the celebrities salivating to talk to these two. Watch the CEO of Disney eyeing Meghan Markle up and down. And then also the director who has like the black glasses on in the back. Like they're so enamored by Prince Harry and by default enamored by this Meghan Markle. And since Meghan has zero substance, the awkwardness to have a conversation or a genuine, meaningful conversation falls flat. The guy with the white hair, he's a famous composer. Megan just shakes his hand and then immediately directs her attention to Elton John's husband and completely ignores having any kind of conversation with this composer. You can see Megan is so darn rude, which, you know, maybe her ignorance in the fact that he's not well recognized, but this is what you see when someone who is an opportunist only cares about what others can do for her. And in this situation, Megan's only looking at certain people in that greeting line in how to advance her own career. I'm surprised she wasn't able to have further conversation with Beyonce, considering that Megan just allegedly had a baby and Beyonce has got three kids. Couldn't she have asked about those three kids? No, of course not, because it's all about Megan. Which is why when you look at the reaction and faces of Jay-Z and Beyonce, Jay-Z's not impressed. He's given these false laughs and the, uh, <laughs> you know, with the royals, you know, inside he's like, look at this bitch. You know, she thinks she's all something, but she's nothing. You know that that's what he's thinking inside. And Beyonce is also smiling all, you know, looking fabulous and can suss her out immediately. A big part of why Meghan and Harry failed was the fact that Meghan couldn't handle sharing the spotlight with someone else, a spotlight in which was shined predominantly on the significant other. It's so painfully obvious that Meghan was incredibly jealous of Prince Harry's popularity. It was Prince Harry who everybody wanted to get to know and give opportunities to. I mean, recently Dior wanted to give Harry his own ambassadorship. And he was like, no, I can't do it unless you include Megan. They didn't want Megan. This couple had everything at their fingertips. And because Megan was greedy, selfish, and downright petty and jealous, 
of people that were clearly trying to help her, including her husband, she took it and threw it away. And I'm sorry, I don't feel bad for either of them. No one should feel sorry for these two. In fact, they should literally just go away and live a quiet and peaceful life. So when you look at this, Beyonce was talking about having Archie and saying it was a blessing. I do recall that they were having a conversation about that. But Megan never asked Beyonce about her children or how they were doing or even asking Jay-Z, yo, what do you got on tap for a next album? Can we expect another drop? Like nothing. And here she is standing awkwardly waiting for Harry to truck it along when she very well herself could have moved on to the next person and introduced herself. But she had to wait because there's opportunity there. And of course, we're just going to have that silent, awkward pause. It's almost like she was hanging around in hopes that Beyonce was going to ask her a question when she very well could have moved on to the next person. But she stuck it out there because the FaceTime with these A-listers, she couldn't give up. And as you can see, they were not interested in talking to Megan. It's like so cringe that she held herself back in order to have more time with Beyonce and Jay-Z. Like, it's so thirsty and so obvious. And for the most part, you see Harry is the one who's carrying the conversation. He's engaging, people are interested in listening to him, and he has the attention. When Megan tries to take that conversation back, it ends up falling and then Harry ends up taking the conversation back. And I do think that there have been times with Harry and Meghan where Meghan couldn't stand this. And for the most part, you see Harry is the one who's carrying the conversation. He's engaging. People are interested in listening to him and he has the attention. So Meghan quickly turns her face away because she sees the director of The Lion King there and goes ahead and introduces herself to this guy. And it's just so awkward that she skips over the woman that was standing next to Jay-Z and starts flailing her arms. And then after she runs out of things to say, then she then stops and introduces herself to the woman that is politely standing there listening to the garbage that's coming out of her mouth. Anyhow, I bet Megan watches this video over and over because this is the only time Megan will ever get a taste of what it feels like to be an A-list Hollywood so-called celebrity. You know, you could even argue and say that she was even in a tier above being an A-list celebrity because even the A-list celebrities and powerhouses all were salivating to talk to her. She fumbled the bag big time, and in her little mind, because she is unable to learn from her mistakes, is going to continue to keep doing this nonsense to a point where, you know, people, if not already, will be laughing at her. And I feel zero empathy for the two of them. If their marriage has fallen apart, which I suspect it, it has, because, you know, what has gone on over the last couple of years, no marriage would be able to withstand that. If I was someone that was advising Harry, my recommendation would be sit down and get your story out before this evil one sits down and does it. Raise your hand if you could see Megan doing a Martin Bashir type Diana interview and dropping it on Diana's death anniversary. She's going to do something at the end of August. It's inevitable because she just can't help herself. So we all know that Harry was there to pimp out his wife. And as a result, she got this voiceover that bombed completely. Shawnee has already lost track of Jomo. There he is. He's, um... I'm not going to subject you guys to any more of listening to that horrendous voice. I just wanted to remind you that she did do this voiceover. The reviews for this were so bad, and it wasn't bad based off of the content. It was predominantly about Megan's grating voice. As you can see, that's all people were complaining about. So you have to wonder, what was Spotify thinking? I honestly believe that when Megan did this in 2019, she had already been talking to Spotify and Netflix and were getting those deals together. At the time, nobody knew how much Megan was making off of that deal. And it was released that the money would be going 
to the charity of their choice, which they chose Elephants Without Borders. Somehow, this rumor got around that Megan was paid $3 million for this voiceover work, which led many people to ask, did Disney give this money to charity, or did they cut a check directly to Megan so she could pass it off to the charity and get it as a tax write-off? Many people have assumed that she took this money, even though there's no evidence of it. Also, there's no evidence anywhere that says that she was paid $3 million for it. So let's put this controversy to bed once and for all. Once this elephant documentary was released on Disney in April of 2020, Vulture wrote an article titled Meghan Markle Makes Glorious Return to Acting by Narrating Elephant Farts. Yes, that was the title. They mentioned that for this 90-minute documentary, for which Disney donated a sizable amount of money to her charity of choice. This is the only place that I was able to find, and I suggest if you guys don't believe what I'm saying, go out and find me the evidence of where a quantity was listed on how much Disney had donated to Elephants Without Borders so we could all get on the same page. But this is the only place that I have found where it actually references a quantity or size per se in the amount of money. It doesn't say three million, but it says sizable. So, you know, we could think that three million dollars. Yeah, that's a sizable amount. So I did some digging and Disney Conservation Fund did issue a grant to Elephants Without Borders. You can see it in the last line here. It says, in honor of Disney nature elephants working to address human elephant conflict head on with the novel Elsense's repellent toolkit, demarcating wildlife corridors and maintaining water holes to help keep elephants in national parks. Support will also go towards building an education center for the program in Botswana. So they're saying here that they issued a grant, but there's no amount listed. So the next thing to do is to cross check with the IRS tax filing for the year of 2020. So when you look at the historicals for the revenues of this non for profit, you can see that they're not raising millions of dollars in funds. The highest year that you can see was in 2020. So let's take a look a little bit closer at 2020's tax filing. So there appears to be a really big jump, about a half a million dollars more than what they raised the prior year. So when you look at the statement of revenue, you can see that a total amount of gifts, grants, and other contributions totaled $699,176. Of that money, only one donation was restricted, meaning that it had to go directly to the program. So my guess is that Disney cut a check for a half a million dollars, which means that Megan was not getting paid $3 million for her voiceover work, but in reality, a lot less. In fact, I think even a half a million is too much to give to this woman. But being that it was for a good cause, you know, that would make sense. Now, do I think that that's a sizable donation? Well, when everybody has that number of $3 million, you know, in their head, a half a million doesn't really seem all that much, but when you take into consideration the charity's history of funding, yeah, half a million dollars is a sizable amount. As you can see, in 2021, there was a considerable amount less that was raised as their total revenue. As you can see, Elephants Without Borders acknowledged the Walt Disney Company for their funding. It does appear that this funding was issued in August of 2020, because as you can see in July of 2020, their name is not listed on the website, but then a month later, the Walt Disney Company pops up. So I'm assuming that that's when they got this money. I know that there's going to be people out there that want to believe that Megan took this money, but... Use a little bit of logic. At the time when Megan did this voiceover in 2019 and all of this came onto the scene in 2020, they didn't have their foundation set up. So if they were to cut a check, they had no place to put it. And it didn't go through Travelist, nor did it go through the MXW foundation that they were trying to liquidate. So where would the money have gone? Especially if the excuse was 
to get a tax break. It would have had to have gone through some charitable organization on Megan's side. So if you all think that there was a way for Megan to hide a half a million dollars or even the three million dollars that everybody is thinking that she received, then you're going to come up short with finding any evidence for that. This right here shows that money was given by Disney to Elephants Without Borders, and that was the promise. There was no place anywhere stated that Megan received $3 million. It is likely that Megan received a half a million dollars, but we all know Megan. She must have inflated that rumor and dropped it somewhere, and it caught on like wildfire. Unless somebody comes up with some other evidence, I think that this mystery has been solved. But what do you guys think? Definitely leave your thoughts below and you know it. As always, I will be back with more content. But until then, please be safe and I'll talk to you later. Bye. I was such a broad.